Welcome. I'm Lee Cowan, and this is Here Comes the Sun, a closer look at some of the people, places, and things we bring you every weekend on Sunday morning. A lot of great actors have played Cyrano de Bergerac, and now count Peter Dinklage of Game of Thrones among them. He might not come to mind as an obvious choice, but it turns out that he is a perfect fit. In a rare interview, he opened up to Leslie Stoll. You're famously private. Mm. I'm told you really don't like to talk like this. Well, if I was truly private, I wouldn't be here. You know, I'm not Salinger. You know. <laughs> I'm an actor, so <laughs> I'm selling cars here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, but I what? think I think privacy <laughs> is something that's really getting chipped away at these days, especially with actors. The more you know about an actor's personal life, you see it on screen when they're playing a character. And I feel like subconsciously, it kind of trips away at the fabric of what you're watching, who you're seeing. I want to say to you, get over it, because this is the way it is. <laughs> and you're not going to I know, but really... I'm a cranky old man. That's still railing against it. We'll have more excerpts from their conversation coming up a little later in the show. You were a rock star in high school. I did have a band a long time ago, but it definitely wasn't what I was going to do professionally. Um, so we had to break up because some of the band wanted to keep going and some of us wanted to go be in movies. <laughs> Here's what I'm laughing at because I obviously have read about you. So you get rid of the band because that's not what you want to do and you go get a job as a data what, enterer? You spent six a, it's years. It's New York City. It's very expensive to live here. <laughs> but um, you chose data entering, my Because God. I wanted to hide. I didn't, I didn't have the confidence to be waiting tables. Um, I wanted to, if I wasn't going to be an actor, I was going to hide in a cubicle and where I could also, you know, when I thought I was a writer back then, I could write on the computer while they, I pretended to do work quite often. Then we go beachcombing with our Connor Knighton, who's found how the ocean recycles what it never really wanted in the first place. These bits of glass were once trash. Everything from soda bottles to automobile taillights. But you know what they say about trash. Some people would call it trash, but I call it treasure, and I also think it's a valuable service to pick it up off the beach. That's all ahead, right here on Here Comes the Sun. For all the instant recognition that actor Peter Dinklage usually gets, especially after Game of Thrones, in person, he's soft-spoken and fiercely private. Leslie Stahl looks at the twin realities of the very singular Peter Dinklage. Hello, Leslie. Hi. Full disclosure, I've wanted to interview Peter Dinklage for years, but he's a hard man to get in the chair. You're famously private. Mm. I'm told you really don't like to talk like this. Well, if I was truly private, I wouldn't be here. You know, I'm not Salinger. You know. <laughs> I'm an actor, so <laughs> I'm selling cars here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, but I what? think I think privacy <laughs> is something that's really getting chipped away at these days, especially with actors. The more you know about an actor's personal life, you see it on screen when they're playing a character. And I feel like subconsciously, it kind of trips away at the fabric of what you're watching, who you're seeing. I want to say to you, get over it, because this is the way it is. <laughs> and you're not going to be- I know, but I'm a cranky old man. That's still railing against it. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you, Cyrano de Bergerac. The vehicle this charmingly cranky 52-year-old is selling uh, is Cyrano. Cyrano? Cyrano. Cyrano. A new movie based on an old play. Cyrano de Bergerac was written by Edmund Rostand in 1897. It's the tale of a man ashamed of his appearance. You don't think she has the depth to look beyond your Careful. unique physique. Not bad. Thank you. To love you for who you are, not for how you look. Who helps another man. With women, my whole life I've been useless, silent. I'm. What's the word for when you're bad at expressing yourself? Inarticulate. That's it. So Cyrano ghostwrites love letters to Wu Roxanne, the woman both men love. The character, who's traditionally bedecked with a large and repellent nose, has been played by everyone, from Jose Ferrer, who won an Oscar for his portrayal, to Steve Martin, who didn't. Yes, what you've heard is true. I am not a rumor. I'm living proof that God has a sick sense of humor. What made you decide 
to shoot a sequence on a volcano. Well, it seemed to be a good idea at the time. <laughs> Director Joe Wright almost had a disaster movie on his hands when Mount Etna... It exploded while you were there. Yeah, that was unforeseen. It was bad luck, really. <laughs> on the last day, the volcano erupted <laughs> and literally spitting, no. you know, lava at us... Oh, my God. ..as we ran down the hill. Literally yeah. ran for your life. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. That was the cliffhanger finale of the film shoot in Sicily, but our story really began calmly in Connecticut at the Goodspeed Theater three years ago. Was Peter still working on Game of Thrones at the time? He wrapped Game of Thrones, and two days later, he started rehearsal for Cyrano. Erica Schmidt, an award-winning dramatist, is Peter Dinklage's wife. I am a poet. My words are wasted now. They need to be spoken aloud. She wrote and directed the stage adaptation of Cyrano. I love the character of Cyrano. I love how uncompromising he is, that he is unwilling to be bought. I don't think he would post much on Instagram or Twitter. You know, he's, he really is his own person. And yet he's insecure. Yes. Erica told us, your wife, that you begged her for the part. Begged? Yeah. Yes, yeah. I mean, essentially, <laughs> yes, that's true. But um, why? What was it? Well, for an actor, you always want to do something that, for me at least, that scares you. I know that sounds very valiant of me, but it's true. I just never had sung since I was a kid. I can't tell you how long I... Joe Wright came to see the play. His girlfriend, Haley Bennett, starred as Roxanne on the stage as well as in the movie. He asked Erica Schmidt to write the screenplay. So there were scenes in the movie that are almost directly from the play. Yes. And then other things he needed to change. Yeah, I mean, the last act is almost word for word. What did you ask her to add? She had cut all reference to the nose and made no reference to Pete's height. And I felt that it was important to make some reference to how others might perceive Cyrano. So at the very beginning... Someone calls him a freak. You're a freak. <laughs> the insult is antique, but I accept it. <laughs> and so we understand... Freak. ...what the deal is, and then we can get past it. Is that it? Your wife, she said she didn't write the play with you in mind. No. But I wonder if she did subliminally, because it fits you so perfectly. Oh, It's yeah. the glove. Perhaps she did subliminally. I think with the stage version, I'd like to think that it just, it allows it to then speak more universally and not just specifically to someone my size or somebody who is differently abled. That we all have that sort of insecurity when it comes to the person we are. In the movie, you forget it. Well, that's my, my gig, is to sort of, it but is even who I am. It, it's set well, let's get beyond it, and that's not all who I am. I mean, I've read scripts where I say no to these characters that they're trying to get me to play because it's just my height, and uh. it never scratches anything deeper. You had a rule, it is said, that you wouldn't play Santa's elves, and you wouldn't no. play a leprechaun. They're not real people. They're not real people. No. I mean, if it was a really well-written leprechaun who had complexity and, like, but, uh, no. Bronn, the next time Sir Merwin speaks, kill him. Game of Thrones. Oof. That was a threat. Because of that. See the difference? You're totally famous. Can you walk down the street without being swarmed? Depends. Depends on the day. Do you hate it? Yes, that I do, because I'm not working. <laughs> I'm just walking down the street. We lived in Chelsea for a while, and we had a dog, a very big dog, <laughs> that had to be walked a lot. And this was probably season three of Thrones. And he started walking down the street, and all of these people came. I don't know where they were coming from, from the restaurants. And, and it was like 30 people, you know, Peter, Peter, Tyrion, coming towards him. And I see, walking towards me, Leonardo DiCaprio with a baseball cap and sunglasses. And he just walked right by, nobody oh even God. blinked. But it was, I mean, he can't hide, Peter. He can't put on his sunglasses and a hat and disappear. What's intriguing is that you have spoken about how you don't want to be stared at, you don't want to be looked at, and then you choose a profession that's all about people staring at you. you know, but it's I, a point. But I own that stare. It's because I've flipped it, maybe, and they, they're, they're staring at me for a different reason. Well, what about when you were growing up? You've said you had a happy childhood. Oh, here we go. 
For a moment, oh, I thought this would be the abrupt end of our interview, <laughs> but... Oh, God. No, I mean, I grew up in, in, the, in um, town in New Jersey, and we didn't move. I wasn't the new kid. Mm. I imagine if someone like me comes into a new school, there's a bit of uh, getting used to it, a social dance there, but uh, I grew up in the same town, so it was just what it was. Are you as balanced as you come off? No. I'm a mess. <laughs> You're giving me a little bit of acting thing. <laughs> you think I'm acting now? A little bit. <laughs> no, really? Well, the, look at the, the turn off the cameras. <laughs> then I won't act anymore. No, this is me. I'm, I'm balanced. More from Leslie Stahl's conversation with Peter Dinklage coming up in just a few minutes. But first, we go and seek of treasure that it seems the ocean really wants us to find. We've all heard of messages in a bottle, but most of us have rarely found one washed ashore. And yet the ocean still has messages for us, if you look close enough, which is just what our Connor Knighton has done. At this coastal arts festival in Maryland, Thank you. thousands have come to see sea glass. Fashioned into everything from necklaces, to butterflies, to elaborate window displays, it's beautiful, and yet... It's pretty much all garbage, yes. These bits of glass were once trash. Everything from soda bottles to automobile taillights. But you know what they say about trash. Some people would call it trash, but I call it treasure, and I also think it's a valuable service to pick it up off the beach. Found on beaches across the world, sea glass is glass that's been on an extended surfing trip. After decades of being pounded by the waves, weathered by the water, it washes up in frosty smooth bits prized by beachcombers. If you're on the beach and you start finding the glass, you just get addicted. It's like treasure hunting and it's so much fun. It's a pastime that's captivated plenty of colorful characters, like Captain Cass Forrington. A retired merchant marine captain, Forrington now runs the International Sea Glass Museum in Fort Bragg, California. We're going to go down this way. A town that's become famous for its glass-covered beaches. And what we're seeing here used to be a dump. This was the dump. Once upon a time, these coves comprised the town dump. Maybe the most scenic dump in the country. Well, it is now. <laughs> Coastal cities frequently threw their trash into the ocean. But at Fort Bragg, the rock formations just off the shore created waves that kept churning everything back. So everything we're walking on right now is glass, right? I don't see any sand. Everything is glass. Everything. Eventually, the glass that came back looked a lot prettier than what had been cast out. It's the only thing people make and discard that comes back better than when we first made it. This shimmering beach in Bermuda is near the Royal Naval Dockyard, where British sailors would have chucked countless bottles into the ocean. Given the area's infamous shipwrecks, it's also possible that some of this glass has come from much further away. At her shop in St. George's, Kelly Thompson makes jewelry out of what she finds, although she's quick to share the credit. Mother Nature would be the original creator of the sea glass. So do you feel like you're co-creating this jewelry with Mother Nature? Always. Yeah. <laughs> it's possible to mimic Mother Nature, Faux sea glass is created by stirring up shards in a rock tumbler. A process that can take decades is cut down to days. But for the faithful, there is a clear difference. It's horrifying to me that people do it. Each piece of authentic sea glass comes with a story. It had an entire life before it was cast away. Thankfully, towns aren't blatantly dumping garbage into the ocean like they once were, which means there's less sea glass washing up these days. From Bermuda to Fort Bragg, the most notable glass beaches have become tourist attractions. Visit one, and you'll see a truly bizarre sight. Signs asking visitors not to pick up the trash. Was it love at first sight? Does that exist? After the break, more from really? Leslie Stahl's is visit that, with that actor Peter though? Dinklage. No. Stay with us. No. It's sexual thing. Yeah, it's... Welcome back. As promised, here's more 
from actor Peter Dinklage. You were a rock star in high school. I did have a band a long time ago. It was after high school. After high school. It was after college. It was New York in the 90s. We played CBGBs. It was a lot of fun, but it definitely wasn't what I was going to do professionally. Um, so we had to break up because some of the band wanted to keep going and some of us wanted to go be in movies. <laughs> Here's what I'm laughing at because I obviously have read about you. So you get rid of the band because that's not what you want to do and you go get a job as a data, what, enterer. You spend Got six a, it's years. It's New York City. It's very expensive <laughs> to live here. But um, you chose data entering, my Because God. I wanted to hide. I didn't, I didn't have the confidence to be waiting tables. Um, I wanted to, if I wasn't going to be an actor, I was going to hide in a cubicle and where I could also, you know, when I thought I was a writer back then, I could write on the computer while they, I pretended to do work quite often. Why acting? I ask myself that every morning. <laughs> um, but then what else am I going to do? Um, I like gardening. Um, you know, I can type. Uh, I can go back to data entry. Um, I don't know because I find myself, when I'm not doing it, missing it terribly. I, I sort of go, that's it, this is the last movie I'm going to do. I'm going to take like a year and just find myself and be with my family and friends and then a month goes by and I'm, I'm clawing at the walls. Um, I, just, I just love the, the, the culture of it. I love the, everybody who's involved in it. They're just a bunch of outsiders that have found each other and each experience is, is unique but there's, a, there's just an element of just real silliness. Um, <laughs> the actors are just goofballs, usually. It's intriguing that... And you get to travel. For, oh, well, that's true. For you free. know, they I mean, you it. see the world and they pay for it. So. <laughs> it's like my job. Yeah. Game of Thrones. Oh, my What's God. What's that? What is that? That's done and dusted. Well, I was Ten years of my think. life. Oh, for you it's dusted, but yeah. not for people who haven't seen it yet. Right. Wow. Right. Tyrion. So you, you read the books. I didn't. What? Still haven't. No. I can't now because I, I like to have my own imagination when I'm reading a novel and now I'm just going to be thinking of my okay. friends as those characters. So I, I You took that role without reading mm -hmm. anything about who he was from the books? No. I mean, I, needed, I definitely had my list going in. Um, I knew David Benioff somewhat. David Benioff and, and D.B. Weiss were the showrunner creators. They're the ones that adapted... George's books into the show that we now have. So I met with them and Carolyn Strauss, another one of our producers in LA, and they, I had heard that it was something about this HBO fantasy show. With and, dragons. Yeah, <laughs> and immediately I just go, I just say, N not for me, because that is usually a genre, a world in which uh, someone like me is just a bearded, whatever, just just a creature, basically, um, not mm -hmm. a flesh and blood man or woman. Mm -hmm. And then they, David, I, I wasn't familiar at that point with Dan, but David, I knew he had written The 25th Hour and uh, a book called City of Thieves, and I just, I, I loved his writing. So I knew I was going into something interesting, but I, I, I was honest with them, and then they just sort of let my have my day in court in the meeting, and then they went, well, that's good news because Tyrion is, and then they explained the character. And I, 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 I was hooked. You loved doing that show? I loved it. Probably one of the greatest experiences of my life because wow. it wasn't just a show, it was my life. It was living in Ireland half of the year, every year for 10 years, um, nine years, um, including the pilot. So it just consumed everything. So there was no separation from, from work and life. Uh, are you a method actor? Do you get into the part and stay in the part as long as the movie's being made? I never considered myself that, but um, those close to me think I am. Um, they tell me oh, I am. You bring it home. Yeah, probably. Um, but that's natural. I mean, that's what you do most of the day. Um, you do that and sleep, really, so it's natural to sort of let it bleed over, especially if it's a really um, great part that you're really committed to. But, you know, I think 
when you're a parent, uh, you can't really get away with it as much, perhaps, than when you're younger and um, don't have children. Because you can't really be too method in the face of um, yeah. growing, uh, taking care of kids. Yeah, how can you, you know, bring that If home? you're playing some serial killer. <laughs> Daddy, you know, maybe you <laughs> you're should. a serial killer. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no. So that gets a little complicated. Are you the busiest time, actor on the planet? This year was a little busy. It's time to take a little time off. Yeah. Well, don't let the fame drift away. No. So no. you can keep getting these great parts. Yeah, we'll see. And, and you have a production, your own production? Yeah, company. Estuary. Me and my, my, my producing partner, David Ginsburg, uh, it's about mm, 10 years old now. Oh, um, my. So we've done a handful of smaller films. That's yeah. good for you to have. Yeah, no, own. that's what I'm interested in. I'm, I'm, it's sort of, and you can sort of step off away from the acting part of it and produce. And I love. Actors come in so late in the game with movie making. I mean, it takes years for movies to get made, and actors come in at the very end of the process. Um, so I like just getting smart people together, creative people, and uh, getting it done from the beginning, being there from day one. Helping create the characters. Yeah, and, and yeah. getting the right people in the room together. Because that's, that's the real, uh, that's the tricky part, you know. And the fun part. And the fun part, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So when you met Erica, mm -hmm. was it love at first sight? Does that exist? Yes. It does? Really? Yes. Isn't that, is that love, though? No. No. It's sexual thing. Yeah, it's Men. chemistry, something in the air. Yeah. But love comes later, I think, I find. Yeah. I think that's a very beautiful idea, um, if it keeps going, if, it, if you can carry through with it. But I think love comes later. But you were attracted. Yeah. Right away. Sure, of course. Of course. <laughs> I'm Lee Cowan. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you right here next time on Here Comes the Sun.